Ciao, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. We are doing three Mediterranean diet savory breakfast recipes. I've shared a lot of breakfast recipes on my channel so far, but of course I have plenty more to share and they do reflect seasonal summer produce. They definitely can be all changed around to your diet preference, to your type of flavor preferences, and I'll of course share that once we get into the video. I just think these are three really quick and easy. Like that was my biggest goal for myself filming wise, but also just for you. Like I want to make something quick and easy. And I just think that's such a great reflection of the Mediterranean and the way that they eat in the Mediterranean is it's just very simple, simple ingredients, simple ways of cooking. We want things that are fresh, but also very easy to make, nutrient dense, high quality, all the things. We are starting off with a delicious, savory lemon zucchini bread. I could not go a cooking video without a little bit of lemon. So that is that first recipe. Moving into recipe number two, which is an incredible salad. It's based off of a Turkish salad using white beans, uh, hard boiled eggs. You can, you know, add in things, take out things. This is just kind of my variation. And I think we need to normalize one salads for breakfast. And number two, you don't always have to have loads of greens to make it a salad. And third, I'm making polenta crostini. They're kind of Parmesan crusted really nice and crispy you dollop it with just a little bit of some basil whipped feta ricotta mixture caramelized slow roasted that fettini, aka little tiny tomatoes and a little sprinkle of crispy prosciutto on top i mean it's it's perfection we're gonna segue into something i'm so grateful to share and i'm so excited to share and then we'll get to cooking i also wanted to give a huge shout out and thank you to caraway cookware I am so, so excited. I'm so grateful. I've never used their pans or pots or any of their cookware before. I've been really, really in the market to really just learn more about a lot of cookware and bakeware now that I'm making so many cooking recipes and videos. And of course I want it to be as healthy and non-toxic as possible because a lot of the metals and things used in cookware and bakeware and all of that can be very, very toxic. So you want to get high quality, really well made items for your kitchen because what you use in your kitchen you're also eating from. The Mediterranean lifestyle is all about quality. And so I'm so excited to open this up for you guys real quick. You're one step closer to a cleaner cooking. So in the first box inside the big box, one of the keys to being an adult, I feel like the older I get and the more adult I become, I want everything to have a lid, have a place. I don't want hodgepodge, like two random pots from here and three random lids from here. Like I love that it's a cooking set. And so we have this beautiful holder so that you can put it on like the back of your cabinet and it just makes it so convenient. It says, gone are the days of misplacing all your lids. I opted for the cream color because I love, I love creamy whites. I probably should have gone with the dark blue color because I don't know how well I'll maintain keeping these clean, <laughs> like without grease stains and stuff like that. So I love this canvas that the lids are held in. And then I have all of these, a saucepan, a fry pan, a saute pan and a Dutch oven. I'm obsessed. The most important part about why I really, really wanted to try these and try out this company is the 100% non-toxic ceramic uh, surface as opposed to the non-stick, more toxic cookware. And so I'm so excited. I honestly have never tried this company, so this is gonna be the first time trying it out. I don't know my opinion yet, but if you guys are interested in it, I do have a discount code that I'll link in the description below. But yeah, we're just gonna put these to the test today. I'm gonna unbox these and we're gonna get started on the first recipe. I hate starting off a video this way, but I'm gonna admit it, I failed. I failed on recipe number one, it was not good. I tried to make a gluten-free and dairy-free zucchini bread with lemon and I used dried herbs and lots of nutritional yeast. So I cut into the zucchini bread and I don't really like it. It doesn't taste very good. I love the idea of a savory lemon zucchini loaf. This isn't it. I knew I could do so much better. I mean, it was okay. My aunt even tasted it and she said it was okay, but I don't want to give you guys anything but the best of the best. And so it's a few days later. Again, I apologize for starting off the recipe video with a fail. I can promise you those, the other two recipes in this video are fabulous. So stay tuned for those. And also this, because I remade it. And I will say, because I gave you guys two other gluten-free recipes in this video, I was okay to make this gluten. <laughs> we love gluten on my channel, as you know, but if you are gluten-free, which is totally fine, just go ahead and use all-purpose gluten-free flour. I love using single grain flours. So I used einkorn flour for this lemon, herbed lemon zucchini bread, herby lemon, lemon herbed zucchini bread. 
savory lemon herb zucchini bread. <laughs> I don't know what I'm naming it. It has those three things going through it. I tasted the batter. It tasted like a liquid bread. So I just knew it was gonna taste good when it went into the oven. That's a huge tip I have when you're baking is taste the batter. I mean, obviously it's gonna taste weird because it's liquidy and it's not baked like banana bread or carrot cake or whatever. But if it's not super flavorful and sweet, it won't taste good once it's baked because once it's baked, it loses even more of that sweetness or those flavors. So you want it to be overly salty if you're doing something savory or overly herby or lemony and I could taste all of that. So I knew this bread was gonna turn out great and I'm so excited that it did. This bread is so simple to make, just olive oil, eggs. Like I said, it is dairy free. If you wanna go all the way to make it vegan, I would recommend using flax eggs. And then I also threw in coconut yogurt for some tangy moisture in the bread. You could also use Greek yogurt if you are not dairy free. <laughs> uh, giving you guys all the options, all the variations per usual. That yogurt really helps with the density and the moisture of this bread. And then I'll whisk that up and then add in the dry ingredients, which I said was einkorn flour, AKA an all purpose or whole wheat flour. And then baking soda, baking powder, lots of salt. And I even went into my herb little garden area <laughs> planter thing to grab some chives, some basil, and some lemon thyme. I feel like it is summertime. I mean, these are three summertime breakfast recipes. Uh, technically, they can be whatever you want them to be, of course, but I wanted to use herbs from my garden. I just thought it was a great way to use some fresh herbs, but the thing with fresh herbs is they have a lot less flavor than dried herbs because dried herbs are concentrated with that flavor. Lastly, the zucchini. So it comes out kind of dry in the beginning, but then once you stir that zucchini in, the zucchini adds that moisture, and so it turns into a beautiful batter and I baked it off and it created this gorgeous gorgeous loaf Good. I'm so excited. I hope it's full of flavor and it actually tastes good. Let's try mm. This tastes incredible. I'm so happy I remade this recipe you guys have to try this bread for breakfast a great savory pastry If you toast this bread up with some cheese on top some cream cheese on top would be absolutely delicious Or you can even do a vegan cream cheese I might come up with a recipe for a vegan cream cheese to use up this bread in a vlog if you guys were up for that would be like a sun-dried tomato one would complement these flavors so so well or some feta on top this is delicious mm. or you could even put like a piece of ham on top of this with some cheese and make a whole entire little breakfast toast situation it's so lemony slight zucchini you can taste the olive oil you can taste the bright herbs this recipe is such a winner. I'm so happy I remade it. All right, let's go back in time now to recipe number two. For the second recipe, I was inspired by a Turkish salad, which was a white bean, parsley, tomato mixture. And I took that very traditional Turkish salad and of course, kind of changed everything up <laughs> because that's how my brain works and I just am that way. You'll see I have already a lot of recipes on my website and on this channel using beans, but I just love legumes in general. I love lentils and chickpeas. These are cannellini beans. There's also navy beans and um, there's a couple of variety of white beans, but I chose cannellini because they're the firmest, hold their form pretty well. Like if I toss them in a salad, they're not gonna get totally mushy. So I am making a serving for two to three, maybe a super small serving for four. I could double this so easily. I'm just, I, I cook for myself. <laughs> so you'll notice that I'm so terrible at telling you serving sizes on my recipes because I just, don't think about it because it's always just me. I don't think about serving others, but hopefully I'll get to that point in my life where I'm cooking for other people and catering for other people and 
Oh well, it's just me right now. <laughs> but this is the kind of salad that also if you make this uh, for lunch and have leftover for breakfast, delicious. Make it for dinner, leftover for breakfast, great. Um, in the fridge, because one breakfast, second breakfast. There's just some things that you'd have to add on last minute versus adding right now. So all the things that I wanna add right now are obviously the cannellini beans, and then I have eight Campari tomatoes. So tomatoes, I'm so picky about. <laughs> really only two varieties of tomatoes I genuinely enjoy, Campari, and dottorini. So you really wanna make sure like when you go to buy tomatoes, let them ripen for like two, three days before you start using them because you will always buy probably at the grocery store more under ripened tomatoes. I have some parsley here, about a large handful, AKA a third of a cup loosely packed. I love herbs. I think herbs are incredible. So I'm literally maybe gonna tear a few of them I mean, maybe uh, I'll tear most of them just because if I let someone eat the leftovers of this in my family, they're gonna be like giant leaves of parsley. But yeah, like giant leaves of parsley. Underrated herbs in salads. Even if you're eating like a normal green salad, think of an herb to like chop up and mix in with like the spinach or the mixed greens or the kale. Herbs are so underrated. And I know that people get really frustrated buying herbs and then they go bad so quickly. There's always a way to intertwine herbs <laughs> I intertwine herbs into almost all my recipes. Parsley is so, so good for you. And of course, with the weight of all the other ingredients, it gets like less harsh. Just use like literal leaves of an herb as a salad leaf, kind of, in a way. And like I said, this is not an overly green salad. If you want to put this on a bed of, bega, bed, bega, bega, bed of. <laughs> If you want to put this on a bed of arugula, a bed of spinach, uh, massaged kale, you could totally do that. You could also throw in quinoa, you could throw in some barley, throw in some grains. Again, Caroline never shuts up with the variations. So a concept that I changed again about this salad is pickled red onions. Love pickled red onions. They are beautiful, they're delicious, they're all the things. So look how gorgeously freaking vibrant. I love pink. I'm pink. I mean, my face is pink right now because I'm so hot in this kitchen. Anyways, if you don't want to pickle them, which is totally fine, you want to take the um, red onions and rinse them and soak them in water before assembling this salad. It diminishes that harsh oniony flavor um, and pungentness, but I could not resist seeing red onions in this recipe and being like, <laughs> I'm going to pickle those. Because like, if I'm cutting up a whole onion, and I'm only using a little bit of it, like why am I plastic wrapping it and putting it in the fridge? What other recipe am I gonna use, you know, this for? So at, this, at least this way, I pickled all of this red onion that I needed to cut up, and it goes on avocado toast, it goes on eggs, it goes on every salad known to man, it can go on tacos, a pizza, a flatbread, a sandwich, in your mouth. The last ingredient I'm gonna add in, besides salt, of course, are black olives. I'm gonna use um, some Kalamata pitted olives. Again, love me olives. I'm going in with whole black Kalamata olives. If you want, quarter them, have them. Honestly, maybe I'm gonna do half and half. I think I should do half and half. Olives in here add so much saltiness. So we have that pickled goodness. We have the creamy protein packed uh, beans. We have that refreshing vegetable goodness from the tomatoes. Uh, this salty, briny goodness from the olives, and it's just the refreshing, bright, zesty, summery goodness of the handful of parsley going in. Mmm. Mmm. I love olives. I'm going in with a big pinch of salt and just toss this all together. It's beautiful, it's vibrant, it looks so appetizing and summery. So this is where I'd stop if you were making this meal prep style, the night before style. Uh, if you're only gonna eat like a little bit of this, I'd take a little bit of this to plate. I wouldn't like start doing the whole thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and plate uh, both bowls of salad. So I have a tahini dressing here. Um, you don't have to use tahini. It can be olive oil, red wine vinegar, salt, pepper. It's a super simple, could be olive oil, red wine vinegar dressing. You could keep it super simple like that. What I love to do with jars when you get down to like the last bit of Dijon mustard, the last bit of tahini, I love to use up like the remaining edges and bottom stuff of jars. So I made this really easy tahini dressing because there's only about two tablespoons, like a perfect amount left in the tahini jar. And then because we're using tahini, I use some toasted sesame oil, honey to kind of round out that toasted sesame oil and the vinegar and the lemon juice. And it just, you know, it tastes incredible and it's so full of flavor, so easy. I mean, this salad is, gets a little bit liquidy 
from the tomatoes. You don't need to necessarily add any of these things on top. I'm just, you know, making it extra fun. On top of that, I'm going to sprinkle on some sumac. It just pairs with everything so well. Again, optional. I just, it's lemony. Seriously, one of my favorite spices. So I'm gonna sprinkle on some sumac. And then for additional protein source, um, apparently this is also kind of traditional of this Turkish salad that this is inspired by, is some hard boiled eggs. I went jammy eggs. I don't really ever eat eggs. I know like eat eggs on their own. I love a frittata or a quiche or something like that, but I don't ever really eat like, you know, scrambled eggs or eggs in general. I just don't love them, but a jammy egg, that jammy, yolky, bright orange goodness, love. So I pre uh, prepped some jammy eggs. It's about six and a half minutes in some boiling water. And then it's about two minutes in ice in an ice bath. And then you peel them right away. You want to eat them right away, but they're so easy to make that you can make them, you know, last minute. And then lastly, Caroline's about texture, all about texture, always about texture. So where is the crunch factor? I toasted some raw pistachios with a little bit of olive oil, extra sesame seeds, and sitar. We have this sesame flavor going with the tahini, the toasted sesame oil, and um, zatar includes sumac so you get the crossover of the double sumac flavor and i just feel like it all paired so well together so that was kind of the idea i had behind this entire salad favorite part because it's just so beautiful I wish I could take a thousand more photos of these like food creations that I make I could take content of it all day long uh, I don't want to eat it because it's just so beautiful but it's also my favorite part because an incredible salty delicious olive with the tomato parsley is not overpowering don't be afraid to like throw whole leaves of parsley in there and then I'm just gonna go in the jammy yolk is so good I just took the biggest bite ever. Ooh, I haven't tried a pistachio yet with everything. There's a couple pistachios on this tomato. Mmm, so good. You guys, I have to eat a salad for breakfast. It's incredible. Good news, bad news. Bad news, I have to stop eating this. Good news, let's move on to recipe number three. For the third and final recipe, we're going Italiano because of course, why not? So this is something I don't eat very often. Polenta. Basically, polenta is the same thing as grits or just cornmeal in general. And I would normally never ever get it pre made. I would like to make it myself, add a little bit more flavoring to it, maybe throw in some Parmesan while, while I'm making it and stuff like that. But I have to remember that, like, I also have a lot of time. You guys might not have a lot of time. And all this is is just water and organic yellow cornmeal, aka semolina, and salt. Uh, acid and acid so two preservatives that are like very natural and normal so at the end of the day this is so fine it's organic it's really high quality trader jose's thank you thank you trader joe's so if you are pressed for time which totally is normal i mean we're, i'm talking about breakfast here which you want something quick and easy it's already in the perfect shape that i wanted it because i want to make little crostini so i'm going to unwrap it and cut these um, into like about a half inch to an inch thick slices my idea is to cover them in Parmesan or at least get some kind of crusty Parmesan concept going on here and fry them in the pan after frying up some prosciutto di Parma. I ask you to spend the money and get high quality prosciutto. It tastes different. It's better. I'm already like really cutting the corner <laughs> with getting it prepackaged. I would much rather go to the butcher to get it nice and cut by hand, but prepackaged is also just fine. So I have prosciutto di Parma. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and crisp that up like I would bacon in a pan, and I want to get that residual fat if possible. Um, add a little bit of olive oil to that residual prosciutto di Parma fat, and sear up this perfect polenta crostini. Because I wanted to give you guys another gluten-free alternative, definitely not dairy-free or meat-free, but I wanted to give you another gluten-free alternative. But I definitely did not wanna skip out on my favorite ingredient in the world, which is dairy, AKA formaggio cheese so i have some ricotta and basil just whipped together i was gonna do a pesto and then make it a creamy pesto with some ricotta 
but I had actually a ton of feta too, so I added a bunch of feta to this to bring out the saltiness. Even though we really don't need the saltiness because I'm gonna top it off with the prosciutto, but I didn't have enough ricotta to make a whipped ricotta basil mixture, so I ended up adding feta. I wanted something creamy to go on top of something crispy, and of course I wanted something even more crispy on top. And then for the little vegetable addition, I have some slow roasted gorgeous datterini that are gonna all fall off the stem. I don't even want to do this because I'm totally going to eat it on my shirt, but we're going to do it anyways. Mmm. Mmm. Sweet. I love the chewy, chewy skin. Threw in some garlic to slow roast them, and you get just a little hint of garlic when you eat them, but nothing too overpowering. It's the perfect combination. The perfect nice little breakfast. A little polenta crostini with some whipped basil ricotta, slow roasted datterini, and crispy prosciutto. I mean, you can't go wrong. This all smells with the crispy Parmesan polenta crostini and this basil whipped ricotta, some garlicky slow roasted datterini tomatoes and crispy prosciutto. <laughs> I always save the best for last. You will be heartbroken if you don't try this. The amount of flavor in such simple things, such simple fried polenta, such simple whipped three ingredient, or two ingredient whipped ricotta, basil ricotta, slow roasted three ingredient tomatoes, crispy prosciutto. I mean, the layers of flavor, I can't, I can't, I mean, I can't. I have no words. Please try any of these recipes. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave a comment below which recipe you are most excited to try. Everything in this video is just inspiration, just ideas to get you in the kitchen eating wholesome, high quality, whole ingredient meals, full of flavor, so easy, that follow the incredible Mediterranean diet for an incredible Mediterranean lifestyle. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. I cannot express enough how much I appreciate you and your support. It means the world to me. And until next time, I hope you create a very, very zestful day. Ciao.